We moved from the country. Okay. Ready? We we moved up here from the country in 1923. I was six years old, and uh, all my family, but three of us, worked in the plant over here. And when I got 14, I got me a job in the plant and went to work. And uh, I, they started me off at five cents an hour. I made five cents an hour and worked 11 hours a day. Then uh, President Roosevelt was running for office, and he said. To after he got elected, that he uh, he was going to raise wages to twelve dollars a week and put us on eight hours a day. And most people said they won't do it. They'll close the mill down before they'll pay twelve dollars <laughs> and uh, work eight hours a day. But they changed it. We went to work it. Then we worked uh, seven hours on uh, every day. We worked seven hours except Saturday. We worked five hours. We got off at 1 o'clock, we went to work at 7, got off at 1 every day, and on Saturday we went to work at 7, got off at, at, at 11 o'clock. And we moved up here in 1932, and they were paying a little bit better wages. I think beginners made $6 a week, and hands that had been there at least six weeks made $12 a week. And but then uh, you could buy a week's groceries for three dollars. You think you could get by on twelve dollars a week, Brenda? <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Joe? No. <clears throat> what always tickled me when they, they always uh, referred to everybody as a hand. You know yeah. I mean? Nobody was employees. Everybody was everybody hands. Was a hand. Uh, I thought I was making money when I was making three dollars a week, and they told me they're gonna raise me up to six for the for the ever road that I went in. I couldn't believe I was gonna make six dollars a week, and the company'd give a big barbecue every Fourth of July, and uh, we'd all go to the barbecue, and we'd have all kind of plays over there, you know. They'd have a greasy pole and put money on on the pole, and people try to climb it, <laughs> get the money. And we really had a time over at the barbecue every Fourth of July. Both meals went in together and gave a barbecue over here on our in the past over here. And uh, each Sunday school class had to work up a skit, and uh, they had to have a little competition about he, who had the best skit. I remember one time they had a a silent church, and I was dressed as an old old lady with long black dress on, an old black bonnet, and I had me a quarter tied up in the corner of a big handkerchief, and when the pastor collection played around, I undone that knot out of that handkerchief, put the quarter in, and everybody just laughed, you know, but, and we'd sing and, and never say a word, and the preacher got up and preached, you know, and did all these gestures and never said a word, and we won that year. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then uh, when the strack, when they was trying to strike, uh, I was too young to work, but there was people riding around in trucks, and they had sticks, and they were yelling, they were pickets around the gate, and I was almost afraid to go by the mill. But, you know, I didn't understand it, because I never heard of a strike, I never heard of a union, having come from the country <laughs> so recently. But uh, when we first moved here, I thought we had really moved to town, because uh, we had electric lights, running water, and there were so many kids around to play with. It was just wonderful. And I'm sure that Joe and Brenda enjoyed growing up here because they had a lot of friends, at least a lot of them ate with us. <laughs> I guess they were friends. It's hard for people who weren't raised up here. So we had we had a, <clears throat> a hundred brothers and sisters. I mean, that, that was every day. Well, Paul, why don't you tell us, is, did the meal, uh, did they raise cows and hogs and no the people raised the cows and hogs and they uh, but now you always tell me you had a uh y'all y'all had a, the meal company had a big barn and they raised they well now they did they had they had cows over i mean mule and they farmed they farmed here they raised corn and they raised cotton at that time you know and they had colored tenants attended you know they they would work the fields and and gather cotton and corn and uh they they kept a mule over there, and uh, who benefited from it? 
Well, the company did, I reckon. Where's cause the barn at? Where our church is was one barn, and up there, the other side of the schoolhouse was another, another barn. barn. They had they had a pasture that they furnished for people that kept cows, and they had cow barns and everything. And uh, one time, Brenda went to Sunday school, and Joel was sick, and we didn't go. And she come home, they told her about Moses in the bulrushes, and she come back and told me. I said, what was Sunday school lesson about? She said, uh, there was a little boy born, and these old mean men were going to kill him. And said his sister took him and hid him in the bull pasture. <laughs> 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 she could always fix that. <laughs> she was speaking of the strike. I was working when they struck over here. They didn't strike. What, what really happened, uh, we went to work that morning, and they had the gates locked. The union locked the gates. One that trying to form a union, they locked the gates. They put their lock padlocks on them. We couldn't get in, and they sent us back home. And uh, two or three days, we went back to work. But uh, one of the strikes, when uh, some uh, state troopers come down here, they gathered them up and carried them to Atlanta. Lots of people were just bystanders. They they wasn't even in it. They wasn't involved no way. But they got them too, and they taken them to to Fort Mac. I'm pretty sure he was glad when they locked the gates because it gave him a chance to go rabbit hunting and fishing one. <laughs> Those were two of his favorite pastimes. But I believe they might have they might have done better if they'd have had any fishing. But this just local people off of the village. They didn't live here. They just come in here and gonna give us a union. You know, they was gonna form a union and uh, really the hand wasn't involved till they got to trying to sign them up. You know. To join the union. I don't think it was very well organized. It wasn't organized. They just, they just worked them up into their friends, didn't they? Yeah. Like, like. And uh, I, they wasn't capable, uh, I didn't think the men that was the head of it, they wasn't capable of having a union. They didn't know what it was all about, I don't believe, because they didn't go at it right. They went did at the, it wrong. Did well, the ones they put in the, uh, took to Atlanta, did they, did they put them in the army or something? No, they put them in the stockade up there. Uh, <laughs> Kept my dad. Well, well, back, back then, if you worked in the mill, you didn't have to go to the army, did you? I mean, they would. If your if your job was dependent on a, a certain job, you didn't have to. In World uh, War Two, uh, a lot of people were deferred because they run key jobs in the plant, and we were making uh, products for the military. So that you didn't have to. Go, and if you got laid off, you went to the army. Is that yeah, if they laid you off, you went. Uh, if, if you wasn't working over you had to go. What about when y'all lived in the house before they was bought? Did y'all have to pay rent? Yeah, we had to pay uh, about two dollars a week. Two dollars a week. It's rent. going to what size house you had? Some, yeah, that's some right. Some of them were about about seventy five cents or a dollar and a quarter a week. They furnished the houses, and when the mill got kind of slack, uh, they uh. They'd give you the rent and they'd give you the water. You didn't have to pay rent nor water and you could no buy- No lights. No lights and you could buy coal and if you ever went back to work, they'd take it out of your check when you went back to work, when you got kind of on your feet. We had no hospitalization insurance whatsoever. If we had a baby and had to go to the hospital to have it or had an operation, when you went back to work, they'd take it out of your check a dollar or so a week. They paid your bill and you, and they, you know, they'd get it out of your check every week. If you worked, if you wasn't able to work, they couldn't. But I thought they was mighty good to the hand. <laughs> and, uh, they were. <clears throat> one time, <clears throat> one time they, they came around and everybody, almost everybody here had a chicken brooder. And they had these 200 watt bulbs in these brooders. And, and uh, this fellow told them, said, y'all better watch that they have put meters on these hiders if y'all don't be saving, uh, saving with the electricity. But people would go off and maybe for the weekend and leave every light in the house on. It and, was free. Uh, it didn't cost anything. It didn't cost anything. They just, they, they just really burned them. And my brother-in-law was a, a maintenance man up at the other mill. And he said they called him one day to go over on the old mill village to fix the light. said when he got over at 12 o'clock in the daytime, that was the only light that wasn't burning in the house. The, the one was broke. <laughs> said he'd tell them, said, Y'all better watch that. They put meters on these high, but nobody would believe it. But they finally did put meters on, and you, you had to pay then so much. It wasn't, wasn't bad. Back in those days, talking about leaving all the lights on, 
Back in those days, we'd go to bed at night and not even latch the screen door. That's how well and how much we trusted our neighbors. It and was just, people, it, you just had all these neighbors and friends, and they were, they were like family. They weren't, they weren't like neighbors, they were family. Because what you had, they had. What what you cooked for supper, they, everybody come in and eat with you. And, and uh, at night, I remember we used to go up to Mr. Johnny Kimmel's, and everybody that didn't have a TV would sit on the trees, and all the kids would play tag, and, and uh, the mother and daddy said they didn't talk about the meal. And uh, that was our entertainment. That's about the only entertainment I can ever remember. And tell ghost stories. Ghost stories. And, ghost and, stories and anecdotes and, from a long time ago when we lived in the country and all such stuff as that. It was fun, and I know Brenda and Joe remembers when the meal company would come around at Christmas time, they'd give each family a, a half ton of coal, and they'd give each child a bag of fruit and nuts and candy and stuff like that. They'd have a man on there dressed like Santa Claus, and they'd hand out stuff, and, and there'd be sometimes 25, 30 or more kids following that truck we'd, we'd around run on the, the truck. village. We'd run the truck all over the village, but they wouldn't. They wouldn't give it to you. You got to your house. That's when, right. when you got to your house, that's when they would they would hand you your sack because your name was on it. You know. They had a list made up. They had a few extra ones in case, you know, but they had the, your name on it, and they'd go around and you'd have to tell them uh, how many you had in family, and they'd put the name down. And when they got the fruit all sacked up, they delivered on the truck. I used to ride on the truck with them to uh, deliver fruit to the kids, you know, and. Uh, it was lots of fun to see all them little kids smiling. Uh, <laughs> and it, uh, and Christmas night, it was the only time they they all give us a uh, a big box of fireworks and a cigar. And we'd all I can remember that. I don't know which one I enjoyed the best, the cigar or the fireworks. <laughs> I didn't know they gave the kids. Yes, Miss Johnny Kimmel would give us all a cigar oh, and, and, and a box it of fireworks. Company. It wasn't the meal company. No, the meal company didn't. The Mr. Kimmel did. And, and we had a football game out in our backyard every every, every afternoon. We had a football and game. Brenda and Brenda was one of the and best players I had. <laughs> and, at, and at school, we used to play in a cow pasture, and the guy said he slid into uh, a cow pasture a lot of times, thought it was second base, you know. I mean, it was just a... <laughs> okay, a let's hold it a minute. I've got to get Dan to move up. Uh, Joe was talking about us being family. You know, if you uh, slept late, you could run out to the neighbor's house and they was eating. You just walk in, sit down, start eating with them. They didn't care. It was like family. I mean, you know, and when the, wherever the kids wound up at, at supper time, that's where they eat. If I was down the street and supper time come, that's where we eat. And if they was up here, we eat up here. And they just pull up a chair and just start eating. I'm going to eat with you. And we said, come sit down and have it. They'd invite you to come on. Come on, we can eat. And there's always plenty. I don't Everybody know. They always had the same thing, so it didn't matter where you well, ate. Butter beans, yeah, butter beans, beans or pintos, <laughs> and, and turnip greens, and that was it. I mean, so it didn't yeah. matter where you ate. And they must have had some water in that and said, come on. <laughs> but you know, that's the thing about it is everybody was in the same boat. Nobody nobody was above anybody, nobody was in below anybody. They was all on the same level. They, 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 they was all struggling to make it, and, and it was just one big happy family, you know. It was a, but I gather that earlier on, your grandmother had a different attitude. Yes. Well, I'm sure the cotton mills back in the 1900s, in the early 1900s and the 1920s, were a lot different to what they were when we came up here because my grandmother, Massingale, told my mother that she would rather see her take my brother and me to the graveyard than to bring us to be brought up on the cotton mill village. And my mother said, why? Because you know, they had always taught us that an uh, honest day's work was nothing to be ashamed of. And she said, well, said uh, a lot of people that worked in these mills, you know, had tuberculosis and said we were liable to contract it, you know. And, um, but after we got up here, they'd already put in humidifiers, you know, to keep the lint down. And they had uh, cooling systems and it was quite a bit different to what she had heard, I'm sure. But my mother was real particular with us when we first come up here. She didn't want my grandmother to say, I told you so. I think one thing too, that they didn't have guards on the machines and stuff like that. And, uh, it was dangerous, it they was worked dangerous. child it labor. It was child labor and no guards on the machine and the lint was like a snow. And uh, People breathed it and you know, they 
they were not healthy. But um, another thing about this, you you had to come up to, I'd a say, a certain standard. If you didn't meet a certain standard, you didn't stay here. You had to keep your property up where you live. Of course, it belonged to the company, but you had to keep it up. You just couldn't let it go like some of them letting it go now. Just let it go. I mean, they, they would paint the house and do the, do the material part of it, but you had to keep it clean and, and cleaned up around, and it had to be a... You know, it had to be a, come up to a certain standard. Uh, and you had it. to meet a certain standard of conduct, too, because there was no drinking, <clears throat> no gambling, and no chasing around after somebody else's mate. If the, if the officials heard about it, you was fired right then. So it, that's why it was such a good place to live. Uh, you know, <laughs> right funny, uh, there used to be a fellow who worked here, and uh, mm -hmm. one day he's coming through the past over there, and he was mumbling to himself, and his uh, one of his nephews said, asked him what was wrong with him. Said, "What's wrong with you? I noticed something wrong." And and Mr. Woody Wood's daddy was a, a superintendent over, there, and he said, "If Mr. Wood don't take back what he told, said to me this morning, I'll never work for him again." He said, "Well, what did he say?" He said, "You're fired." <laughs> that was Mr. Walt Wood. He was. He was the Will Rogers of East New York. He, he sure was. He, that's, uh, I can remember all my life hearing uh, Walt Bush stories, you know. He said, Mr. Walt said he had a load of gunpowder one time, and he turned the curve up there in the wagon, and the guy threw a cigarette in it and said, hey, if it burned out before he could put it out, you know. It was just something all the time from Walt Bush. <laughs> you know, back in them days, you know, when time was so bad, everybody raised hogs, everybody had a cow, and everybody milked a cow, and they... They kept the hogs, and the company had a, a place over at the mill. You could kill your hog, and at one time, the company would kill them for you. They'd send people over there to kill them for you, and you didn't have to lose a day's work. They'd kill them for you, but you had to pay a little fee, you know, for them to kill them for you. They, Everybody had them. They thought of every aspect. I mean, they, they, saw, they, they saw about you. I mean, you know, you didn't have any problem. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, we want to get to we'll, 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 well, okay. we'll get to it first. Oh, I, all I was saying was uh, <clears throat> the mail company, they saw like the every aspect of, like I don't know in school where the, uh, that you might know, see we always had uh, plenty of fresh fruit and uh, uh, they took us to the dentist or anything, I mean you know we was all, we was all seen we about <clears throat> we got our shots and we was took to the dentist TV test. and uh, all, all kind of testing, we got fresh fruit every Friday, I mean you got fresh fruit right, you know, all you could eat and uh so uh, I don't know where the meal company they furnished that. The or dogs for <clears throat> they come around and vaccinated your dogs. I mean, they saw at you just like you was, you were kept. When, I mean, that's what it amounts to. <laughs> they're, they're, not, they're better off back then than they are now. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, you did have a roof over your head and something to eat. I mean, you, you know. Uh, that we had a ball team, you know, the company, they'd help us. They'd give us the land over there to have a ball diamond. and Kept it up. County, yeah, county scraped it for us. And they finally... Uh, fenced it in, you know, in charge little mission. People come over and see them play and to uh, get enough money to buy the equipment and the balls, you know, and the suits and all. They had, had a good ball team. Too. Yeah, they had tennis courts. That's right. And they had a place that, uh, old dames. <laughs> they had a fire hydrant uh, fixed where you could, in cement, where you could pull up and wash your car. They had a place you could go over and wash your car. Everybody went over to a certain place and washed their cars. I mean, it was, it, everything was, they thought of everything. Anything you needed, they, they, got, they supplied it for you. But it sure has changed now because a lot of businessmen, when the company sold the village, a lot of businessmen bought up the houses and they rent them out to just anybody they can get the rent out of, whether the government pays it or they do or not. And the village is really going down. It used to be a nice place to live. We would all, we would all meet up at, at the general store and, and uh, plan our day what we was going to do. We was going to dam up a branch or we was going to... You know, they used to say that uh, you could tell what color they were dying in the meal, but what color the youngers were, you know, because they swam in the dive ranks. And, and uh, that's the truth. And uh, so we were, set, we were sitting around one day bored, and, and uh, we, we knew where a man had a watermelon patch, so we said, uh, we're going uh, to go steal us some watermelons tonight. We're going to borrow some watermelons. We were talking not to steal, but we went and got a trunk load of watermelons and uh, brought them home. Brought them to a place, and we we eat all we could hold and play with them, throw them at each other. Then we decided we'd we just uh, bust them on the hill where people get stuck in it. So 
the only hill we knew was over the railroad tracks. So we took them over and busted them on the railroad tracks. And so uh, nobody stopped and they just sloshed on through them. So we thought we got to do something. So we went at home and got a bugle and a fire cell flashlight. So we backed up the railroad track and this little short guy was standing there holding a light on his head. And this guy behind us had the Boy Scout bugle. And uh, so our school teacher's husband come by in an old Mall Buick. And he looked one way, he didn't see anything. He looked the other way and just he started across the track. We turned that light on and blew that bugle. <laughs> he liked to turn his car over. He got out and come back down there for five minutes. He'd look up the track and he looked down the track. I reckon he figured that was the fastest train he ever saw. <laughs> I came home from work one day and, and he and one of his friends across a the bunch street of my friends. had found a skeleton of a horse. A mule. A mule or something. Man, we knew a man's mule that died and we went over and got his mule and brought home and we was going to erect it out in the front yard. We thought it looked good standing up. They got some wire. We some had them all wire and little about wire together, Mother. And I come I home and I stood that mule skeleton out in my front yard. <laughs> and I like to have a fit. <laughs> and he thought I never would let him learn nothing because... <laughs> well, we did, you know, we didn't get in any kind of... Pro we didn't have no... We didn't get into any kind of problems or, or hurt anybody or do anything. We just missed you. And, and uh, it was just... Uh, it was like I said, I had 50 brothers and sisters, and, and, and every day we all met together and, and got into something or whatever. I Nothing up, bad. I got up one morning and walked out the back door, and there was a five-gallon lard bucket, a lard can sitting out there, half full of cotton-mouth moccasins mm -hmm. from this long to that long. And I went straight up that time just about, and I got <laughs> him up to see what it was all about. He was going to skin them if I'd help him and make him a belt and a, a billfold. And I had a little enough sense to get out there. He poured them out. And we skinned them and he put the, he soaked them in formaldehyde or something. And mm -hmm. they were the pretty smart skins. And he stood them up out there beside the house to dry. And some little kids down the street come up and tore them off of the planks he had them tacked to. And I just liked to have to catch him and hold him. Mm -hmm. I did have to catch him and hold him. He's oh, going my. after some kids. We used to we used to just walk around at night, and, you know, and, and uh, we'd stop and tell ghost stories. And and on Saturday night, we'd always walk to the show. We'd walk to the in Seagull Lake show and then have to walk back home. But it's about three miles in the dark, you know. And we'd always watch a Frankenstein movie. And what about your education? We had a we had a well. The only thing about <clears throat> we, uh, I would say, and you might you might say different, but uh, I, I don't. We didn't get the education we should have got. As far as uh, uh, I don't know if we didn't just uh, if we didn't try hard enough or what. They, they was too easy on us or, or what. But uh, when we went to uh, a different school later in high school, it was hard on us. You know, I don't know if they made it hard on us or we just we just we didn't. found out we were different. We found out we were a lot different. You know, we didn't have that big happy family we had, you know, going to school with. And I, I don't know, I think they, they just, uh, they was easy on you, you know. They was too easy on me. They, they were too easy on you. They let you slide because who you was. Or... Miss Hale wasn't too easy on you. Oh, she wasn't too easy on me. But, uh. Who, Miss Hale? Oh, she who? So you might explain that uh, you went to the Mill Village. We went to Mill Village School, and they they were Five easy on years. us. And, and they and the teachers all knew us, and they favored us, you know. And I, I, I'm not gonna fail him. He wants to go on with these folks, you know. And then when you got to uh, a real school, where it was it was hard. Yeah, I had to go in the field fire every morning, didn't he, before he start school. Yeah, I, see, that was my job. Uh, was totally in cold. In the second grade, I won't have to get. And uh, me and a guy, we could. It wasn't but just the coal pile was just right outside the school door, but it take a. 30 minutes to get that coal pile back, you know, we had to, you know, take a while to get, but uh, we'd have to keep the fire, and the teacher was, the we had a pot belly stove, and the, and the desk were around the stove, and the teacher stood up the stove warming with a hand behind her warming and reading, and we was all sitting in a circle, you know, and everybody bring their lunch and sit on the stove where they stay warm, you know, so we didn't have a lunch room or anything, we had to take what we Yeah, I heard Joe say it last time. He was surprised when they got a cafeteria, you know, didn't have to smell them boiled eggs. <laughs> Everybody bring a boiled eggs and sit on that stove and... and <laughs> <laughs> well, then, what happened when you went to high school? 
It was, it was hard. I want to see. Uh, we felt out of place, and, and uh, we felt like we weren't accepted. That was the biggest difference. You, you, you was out of place. place. You was out of place. See, in Newnan, Newnan was a, a rich town. In a clannish town. And uh, and we did we just didn't we just went socially we just they, didn't mix. They didn't have it but, uh, I played basketball. If you were if you were a sports person, like like she was, no, you didn't have any problems. You you were, you fit right in, you know, because. You know, if they couldn't beat you in sports, you you fit in, you know. And she won two trophies in basketball. She won right. one a freshman yeah. year, and then she won a most outstanding player for her sophomore year, wasn't it? I won most valuable player the first three years. They told her, don't get this school not to go out for basketball the first year because she wouldn't she be no... She couldn't make it, and she made it the first year. And made, won a... Uh, most valuable player. But that's all we had to do was play basketball. We, you know, we, we lived at basketball court. I'll tell you one we more thing old. that Joe didn't tell that uh, he might have enjoyed it. He really enjoyed it, I think. But they built a new schoolhouse over here and uh, they didn't have no shrubbery in the yard, nothing. And he set out all that shrubbery over his schoolhouse. Well, he was missing his grades when uh, he was setting out all that shrubbery. He, he wasn't getting his. Grades. I volunteered. He <laughs> set out all that. Trouble. That was his last year in grammar school, and he landscaped. <laughs> That's why he got promoted. He landscaped the grounds. But he got a good job. But Joe tried to date the teacher his first year, his in high school. And that's where he got off on the bad foot. <laughs> but now, but the thing about it is, <clears throat> you didn't, you didn't, uh, Did you? you, you were self-taught. I'm, I'm not so much, uh, not so much in reading and writing and arithmetic, but you were self-taught on how to do anything. Because if you wanted to add a ball built, there was enough people here, somebody could help you build one. And they, and they were some of the smartest people that ever were. I'm going to tell you what the teacher told me. Brenda talking about him wanting to date the teacher. He had a real young teacher just out of college, and she was beautiful. And she called me and told me, that, would I please talk to him? Said he kept asking her for a date and said, she told him one day, she said, Joel, you know that teachers are not allowed to fraternize with students. He said, well, if you just go out with me, said, I won't ask you to fraternize none. <laughs> And she asked me to talk mm -hmm. to him. And you can imagine about how much mm -hmm. good it done. He's always mm -hmm. been incorrigible. <laughs> now, what I was saying about But he was a lot of fun. <laughs> but it, it, see, if you had a, uh, uh, it's just like a guy wrecked his car. And uh, uh, Pop and uh, him put it back together. Because you didn't take it to a garage. You didn't have a garage to take it to. You just you just done the best you could do and got by the best you could. And, and uh you know, self-education is well taught. You know, you learn from your mistakes, and it's, it's a, and and I don't care what what happened. You had to fix it because there wasn't nobody to call. You couldn't afford them if you wanted to. You know, you didn't have a phone to call. You no, you didn't have a telephone. <laughs> you know, you just fixed whatever you got by, and whatever tore off, you fixed it. And and everybody here could do something. I mean, they were just, you know, they were just self-taught people. You know. Did you 